right now. A presentation of KTAB, KRBC, and BigCountryHomePage.com. This is Back to School, a community conversation. Now, here's Bob Bartlett and David Bacon. Hello, and thank you for joining us. Glad to have you here. 2020 has certainly been an unusual year, <laughs> and uh, along with everything else, everything seemed to start with COVID-19 back in uh, March, late February, and that's our topic tonight, what we're going to talk about, the uh, virus and schools. And such is the case, as Bob was saying, with the start of school, what's been described as perhaps the longest spring break in history <laughs> right. right now. <laughs> and uh, most students have not been in a physical classroom since before spring break when uh, all of this broke. We thought spring break was delayed by a few days and then a week and then it's grown into not until uh, right now when school is reopening, but that's about to change. That's right, as a matter of fact, uh, to get an in-depth look at how students are going to be returning to school, that's why we're here today with this community conversation. And let me introduce our panel of experts from around Abilene and the big country. First of all is Dr. David Young, superintendent of the Abilene Independent School District. Next to him, Mr. Joey Light, superintendent of the superintendent of Wiley ISD. That, then we have Dr. Drew Howard. Uh, well, actually, uh, this is going to be Dr. Glenn Teal, superintendent of Jim Ned, and then Drew Howard, superintendent of the Sweetwater Independent School District. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Of course, uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci, uh, everybody knows him, part of the uh, President's Task Force on COVID-19, and he's been a little uncertain about how schools should actually reopen at one point, saying really that they shouldn't, and then easing, uh, easing into it. So that's, that's what we want to talk about tonight. And uh, let's start with just the basic question of uh, how you've adjusted during the pandemic and uh, what's going to go from here as you start the 2020-21 school year. Dr. Young. Okay, well good evening everyone. I am excited to be here and share information with our stakeholders in Abilene ISD. We are thrilled to have the opportunity to welcome students back into our facilities on Monday, August the 24th will be the first day for students. Uh, it has been since, as you mentioned, since March 6th when students left for spring break and that has been a long time, almost five and a half months. And so I want to be sure that our parents and students that are watching understand that you have two options for education in the Abilene Independent School District uh, beginning this fall. You can participate in person at your designated school. Uh, that will be open to you, but if you are uncomfortable doing that, you have the opportunity to participate in remote learning and, and do your coursework online. I would encourage parents, we've had a survey out there for about a week now where we are asking you to select uh, which of those two options you'll participate in. I will say, even though we describe it as a survey, we really do need every one of our parents to go in and fill that out. So far, we've heard from about 4,500 students. Uh, right now, we're at about 19%. Uh, selecting remote learning and the rest will be coming in person and so we're excited for that to happen and uh, all of the details about our reopening plan in the Abilene Independent School District are available on our website. We have a reopening plan that's called Come Together AISD, A Path Back to the Classroom and many of the questions that you may have are answered there but certainly we're here to answer them tonight as well. Thank you Dr. Young. Mr. Light. Well as everybody knows seems like every day we come to the office and look for the latest and greatest updates that we get either from the governor or the commissioner or the CDC. So uh, I just want to say that as much as I'd like to tell you exactly how things are going to be, uh, we will find out uh, as soon as the, they release things to us. So uh, right now the game plan is we are going to start school on Wednesday, August 19th. Uh, we too will have two options. Uh, you, you can come to school face to face or you can uh, access at home learning and we will uh, have information regarding those things uh, a little more specifically as we get closer to the 19th. I want to say that 
as has been mentioned, I think uh, Bob mentioned it, that uh, Dr. Fauci has changed positions a few times along the way. One thing that seems to be the, the latest and greatest is that uh, it is a good situation for kids to be back in school. Uh, I'm no doctor, I can't make that decision for you, but we, we feel like it's uh, great for kids to be at school if at all possible. And uh, you know, if, you, if there are reasons uh, that students can't be there, th those would be, you know, if, you know, if uh, the child has underlying health conditions or a caretaker has underlying health conditions, uh, you know, obviously that would be a situation where at-home learning would uh, be preferable. Uh, we too have a document online, it's called Bulldogs Return to Learn. We're excited to see everybody and we'll be g continuing to gather information to see who will be at school with us and uh, those that will uh, be taking advantage of the at-home learning. Uh, currently we have about 86% of our uh, folks that have been surveyed that said they wanted to come to school. So we're excited about that. And we'll get into all of this in depth here in the next hour. Thank you, uh, Mr. Light. Dr. Teal, uh, what's, what's the story from Jim Ned in South Taylor County? Bob, uh, proud to represent Jim Ned CISD today and uh, some of the other smaller districts around our community. We uh, have collaborated as much as possible uh, to try to stay on the same page and help each other out. Uh, that's been no different with the gentlemen represented here in these districts. <clears throat> our plan is to come to school in person as much as possible. Uh, we've uh, shared that communication with our, uh, our staff and our community, our parents. Uh, we've sent out surveys to our staff to gauge their level of comfort coming back in person. Uh, we have an have a overwhelmingly positive response to that uh, with just a few uh, concerns uh, that you would expect. Uh, we also uh, just yesterday sent out our parent survey. We're asking each parent of Jim Ned to provide feedback on each of their children and their plan for their return. Uh, and so far, uh, and this is just a day and a half into our survey, we uh, have about 96% of our uh, families that are planning to send their uh, uh, students to school in person with the measures that we've put in place. Uh, there is an uh, ample amount of information uh, that's gone out through our Jim Ned CISD app, uh, but also uh, uh, more updated information on our Jim Ned CISD website. And so there's a link at the top of that website titled COVID. It has all the information that you would need with regard to, to our various options that we're offering. I've mentioned school uh, in person. That is our preference. Uh, with necessary precautions, but we do have a, a school at home option. That's our online learning platform uh, name. Uh, we're using Google Classroom as our learning management system, and um, that is uh, our platform uh, for any student that may need uh, online learning. Uh, and uh, we, of course, we rolled this out in the spring and have uh, 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 ramped up the rigor associated with this with the expectation that students that are in school at home are uh, engaged regularly and participating on a daily basis so they can learn. But we are uh, very uh, strongly in favor of getting our kids back in school, providing them the necessary precautions, trying to be reasonable about our expectations as possible while considering all the different sources and their feedback to keep our kids and staff safe. Very good. Dr. Teal, thank you very much. And Dr. Do uh, Dr. Howard, you coming from the Texas Education Agency, which everybody else is relying on to get their information, you have any uh, inside track on <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> well, I wish that I, uh, I wish that that helped me more than, more than it really does. Yeah. You know, things are changing daily and uh, it's hard to keep up with all the changes. You know, us at Sweetwater ISD, we are beginning school, I think the earliest of any of us on stage today. We are starting our return to school next Monday on August 10th. Uh, we will have both options of face-to-face -face as well as uh, online learning. Uh, it's gonna look a lot different than it did in the spring. You know, if you think back to the spring, about 90% of the curriculum had been covered for the year when we turned out at spring break. We're starting fresh. Uh, this, is, this is brand new. No curriculum has been covered. Teachers have not had a chance to build relationships and get to know the kids that are gonna be walking into their classrooms like they had last year. 
So a lot of challenges to overcome as we go into this. And, and I'd like to just emphasize that we are all in this together, that this is not a, a, uh, a problem that we faced before and that it's going to take all of us uh, united to, to make the best decisions for our communities, the best decisions for our kids. But uh, starting back a little early, or than, than most, um, I, believe, I believe this. There's going to be challenges, and are our teachers, and even me as the superintendent, am I going to be fully ready and prepared and know all the answers on August 10th? You know, that answer is no. But I do know this, the best place for our kids to be is back in front of our teachers and in our schools. And whether that is face-to-face uh, -face or on a Zoom meeting on a computer screen, kids being connected back to our teachers is the best place that they can be uh, come August. Thank you very much, Dr. Howard. Let's start uh, another round of questions first with you, Dr. Young. Each of you have described your hybrid plans. Uh, tell us about each of your at-home plans and how much time will the students be expected to spend online on a daily basis? So as we think about remote learning in Abilene ISD, as was mentioned by one of my colleagues, uh, Google Classroom is our platform, our learning management system that we'll use to manage remote learning. Our students will be connecting to that classroom by Google Meets. Uh, we used Zoom a lot in the fall, or in the spring, excuse me, uh, but Google Meets will be the platform that we use now. It's a little more secure because students have to log in to their platform. Um, so we are adopting primarily what's called the synchronous learning model with our remote learning. That means that students will be actually connected to the classroom at the same time so that it's going on. So if a third grade teacher, for example, normally would have a classroom full of 22 students right there seated in front of them. Well, they might have 15 students physically with them in the classroom and then they may have seven students that are connected by Google Meets to participate in the same instruction at the same time and participate in the same activities and assignments. They'll turn those in through Google Classroom uh, and so they will be participating. So you asked about how much time. Uh, the agency has been very clear about how much time is required. Our, our kids in K through five are uh, subject to a little different uh, number of hours in a day than older students, but uh, three hours uh, for younger students and four hours for our older students in order to complete. But really for our high school and our secondary students, they're gonna be participating in the same bell schedule that they would if they were physically in the building. And so that will be a full school day for those students. And so obviously at elementary school, when the class goes to lunch, our synchronous learners don't have to, you know, that they can power down for a little bit or when they go to recess, things like that, we would encourage that kind of movement at home. But uh, so that's a little bit what that will look like. And I, I would echo what Dr. Howard said the remote learning piece will look very different this fall than it did in the spring. In the spring, uh, we, we weren't taking grades. We were just submitting assignments. We're not, this, this fall will be very much about making sure every bit of the curriculum is covered and that mastery has occurred and grades and progress reports and all of those things will, will be there. And so I'm excited uh, for our students that choose that option. I think we have a great way to serve them but I would also agree with my colleagues that the very best place for our kids is in our schools. But we recognize that's a very personal decision for each family, and so remote learning is, is an option. All right, thank you, Dr. Young. Mr. Light. Uh, David uh, had mentioned the situation with the synchronous learning. Uh, we are adopting an asynchronous uh, style of instruction, and that is where the lesson uh, would be available uh, at the time that is best for the student. We feel like there's uh, going to be a lot of situations that we don't have control over uh, and, and so the student needs to be able to access uh, the lessons in a time frame that works best for them and their family. So we're, we're going to have those uh, asynchronous uh, instructions uh, or t style of delivery uh, that the students will be able to access. We too have used Google Classroom uh, we've used uh, several different other uh, methods of uh, ac uh, accessing the classroom with uh, Zoom uh, or Google Meets. I will say this year uh, the state has 
uh, pushed out a, an option for a learning management system called Schoology. Uh, we are going to try to take advantage of that. It's pretty seamless as far as how it interacts with uh, Google Classroom. And, and our desire is to make this the best uh, situation for the students in that uh, we will be able to um, monitor their, their growth, uh, monitor their progress in the classroom, and uh, also be able to meet uh, the, the needs they have at home as well. So uh, we, we do believe that uh, giving them some support in, in a synchronous setting would be, is going to be utilized by a lot of our teachers and there will be time that the teacher will have uh, as an office time to where students can interact one-on-one -on -one with that teacher as well. Thank you, Mr. Light. Now let's check in with Dr. Teal and the plans for the Jim Ned CISD. As far as the time uh, for instruction, it's just like Dr. Young had mentioned as well, uh, 180 minutes for our pre-K to fifth grade students for the online uh, setting, that's, that's engagement. Uh, with the addition of time to complete assignments that might be outside of that 180 minutes. Um, and then uh, 240 minutes for our sixth through 12th graders uh, would be the expectation for uh, any online engagement uh, for our students. Again, plus additional time to complete the word. Uh, we're we're going to have uh, a, a, a sort of a hybrid of, of what uh, was mentioned as far as the, the platform goes. Uh, within Google Classroom, we are mostly going to have an asynchronous environment, recorded uh, instruction and uh, resources uh, intact there in Google Classroom to access with teacher guidance and teacher engagement along the way. There will be moments in time where the instruction will be synchronous live. Uh, and that could occur uh, at any of our levels. Uh, most likely it'll occur at our AP and dual credit levels uh, at the high school, but we will have uh, some teachers engaging in that with the required instructional time that'll be uh, thoroughly communicated to the parents and the students. Okay, Dr. Teal, thank you. And finally, Dr. Howard, plans for Sweetwater. Yes, our, our plan is more of an asynchronous model uh, with, with some blending, with some synchronous time as well with our teachers, live interaction with our teachers. Um, I didn't mention this earlier, but our plan is detailed out on our website, sweetwaterisd.net, return to school tab, and there's five, five different pillars within our plan to uh, align our curriculum with academic continuity, health and safety, um, human resources, operational structures, uh, in order to detail out what it's going to look like. From, we're going to use, um, a learning management system called Bright Thinker. It's uh, a little bit different than Google Classroom, but very similar at the same time. We hope that this platform gives us three ways to track student attendance when they're online, whether they are engaged in that platform. TEA has lined out three different ways that we can count students present during the school day if they're online. Is engaging in that platform, actually having live engagement with a teacher or submitting an assignment for grading. So this platform should allow us to have all three of those options to count our students present during the day, as well as help us align curriculum. One of the, one of the biggest challenges that we've had from, uh, I believe in, in this time is how do we transition students from face-to-face -to, -face to online, potentially back to face-to-face -to, -face to online uh, as students, if they get ill, during the school year, if we have to turn out a campus or, a, or even the district as a whole for a certain amount of time. So our, our asynchronous system will step students through the process as well as this system can be used in the classroom when it's face-to-face -face as well so that uh, teachers can interact face-to-face -face, but then they also have time during their school day to interact uh, via Zoom or Google Meets with students in order to hopefully ease the transition um, if it occurs when students have to go from face to face to online and, and back and forth. Very good, thank you. Uh, and Dr. Young, we'll uh, get to you here about uh, families that may not be able to afford uh, internet service or have a device that they can use. But first, I, I really want to get asynchronous and synchronous defined. 
can you do that for me first? <laughs> you know, sure. I, I'm not a superintendent, so I well, don't get it. You know, I, I, simply put, synchronous, if, if you think about things being synchronized, they're occurring at the same time. And so okay. synchronous learning is really, you may have students that are there and students that are online, but they're all engaged at the same time doing the same thing. Asynchronous is more of an on-demand type learning system where they can, uh, the, the lessons are housed. Uh, one of my colleagues mentioned recorded instructional sessions mm -hmm. and things, and so you can go on and, and access those. And we will have a, a blend, but our, our belief in Abilene is that, that that time on task between a student and a teacher is so important that that's why we're, we're really ramping up to go fully synchronous where possible. All right, uh, and to the question of uh, how do we uh, support the families who, who can't afford uh, the internet or a device? Sure. Well, this is certainly something that we started to deal with uh, in the spring as we did have our, what ended up being a complete shutdown after spring break. And, uh, at that time, you all probably heard me say in various media platforms, we, we passed out over 5,100 Chromebooks uh, to our students and, and, and to their families. And we were happy to do that. That was every device that we had. Uh, we got about 3,900 of those back. And so uh, we, we, will be, we will have devices that we're able to check out. We've ordered another a total of 7,200 that are either here or coming, uh, as well as but a device is just part of the issue. And let me make a dis another distinction about synchronous versus asynchronous. When we checked them out in the spring, it was one device really could support a family that even had three students because they were each getting on for a period of time. There weren't requirements about how much time. Well, as you've heard, we've got 180 or 240 minutes that are required of all students. And so if a family has three students, even if they're all under fifth grade, that's a total of 540 minutes in a day. And so, so to share the same device doesn't make sense. And so we will be uh, cognizant, cognizant of that. That's part of our parent survey that's available at abilenisd.org slash parent survey. If you're choosing remote learning, we will turn around and ask you, do you have a device? Do you have access to the internet? And then internet access is the other big piece. Uh, you have to have both of those things to make remote learning work. And so we recognize families may not have that. Uh, in the spring, we drove uh, mobile hotspots around on buses. We had community partners that put them up on poles in our stadium and the Civic Center and things like that. Uh, we did not get as much usage out of our bus hotspots as we would have liked. And so what we're gonna deploy those a little bit differently. We have worked with our, we, we identified the 25 highest yield in terms of number of students apartment complexes in the city of Abilene uh, and are working with those over half of them have already said yes you can make this happen and the others are very interested and are just checking with their corporate leaders uh, to install that hotspot right there at the apartment complex so that a large number of kids can get on that hotspot at the same time these are our larger hotspots that can support a bunch of learners at the same time and then we also have uh, a total of 300 more personal uh, size hotspots uh, that we will issue based on need to families. One hotspot could support a, up to 10 users, and so certainly one family could use one hotspot. And so those are things that we will be supplying to students that need them free of charge to them. Uh, but uh, we just have to know who needs what kind of support, and we're going to do everything we can to make it happen. Well, what happened to those other uh, 3,000 or however many? About uh, 1,200. 1,200 yeah, uh, that, that you didn't get back. Did those families, uh, the same families, get to get a new Chromebook? Well, so here's, here's kind of what I think about that, Bob, is that uh, there were, and families needed them. That's what happened. Sure, it, sure. As they went through, we're all in this strange time, and so I don't mind not getting it back if it's being useful support to a family in Abilene ISD. Now, we do know who has them and, and, and all of that, and so certainly if that same student or family needs a, a device this fall to participate in remote learning, we know they've already got one. So it, essentially, we'll be able to recoup those devices and then concentrate with our new, new devices on, on folks that we know don't have them. 
Mr. Light, how about uh, Wiley and uh, Internet and uh, everything we're talking yeah. about? Yeah. So, of course, Abilene uh, is a much larger situation. We Last uh, fall, uh, spring, we handed out just under 500 devices, and uh, I think we checked the other day, and we we still have 41 of those out. So we, you know, we and we know where those are, and we're right. we're working on that. But I would say, uh, you know, what what my thought is is that that was under 500 devices, and that was everybody was engaged in some at-home learning. Uh, with 14% uh, of ours that are going to be uh, learning at home. We think that percentage is going to that percentage is much lower, and therefore the total number of devices we'll have that need to go out will be uh, much lower than that. We think, and uh, then also uh, we have purchased a large number of those devices. I think everybody is trying to make a run on the candy store almost. <laughs> the the uh, the hot spots and devices they're they're under siege. Yeah. Uh, the state of Texas has uh, gone out and helped us with that, and and we are part of a program where they are actually underwriting half of those devices, and uh, so that's a that's a great situation for us. But the delivery date of those, as you might imagine, is is going to be difficult uh, to get those right off the bat. So sure. as soon as we get those in, we'll deploy those as needed. Uh, we too have some hot spots available. We have it at, in the high school parking lot. Uh, we used that last year. We didn't have a lot of usage on that, but that's open to folks as they need it. So, Dr. Teal, thank you, Mr. Light. Dr. Teal, how about uh, in Jim Ned? And you kind of like Wiley have a lot of folks living out in the country. Yes, sir. And how are they able to communicate? We hear a lot about uh, internet service to rural areas not being what it should be. Right. How, how are you going to handle that? Well, let me lead with internet service. Uh, we uh, are about a 346 square mile rural district uh, that's comprised of several different communities, some of which have uh, high speed internet. <clears throat> but in many situations, uh, we have families that are remote and lack that access. So that is an ongoing problem for us. I want to uh, say right off the bat, we were so fortunate to have one of our partners, Taylor Telecommunications, work with us on that uh, situation to string uh, 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 connectivity to uh, several families. Uh, it's considered to be temporary, not only how long this would last, but it looks like it's going to last a little longer. Uh, so that is still in place. They also, uh, them along with Suddenlink, uh, gave the um, uh, more impoverished families reduced rates on that internet service, um, some free, some reduced. And so those are all still in place and we would expect that that partnership and a relationship would continue with those entities uh, should the need increase. Uh, so back to devices, uh, we, uh, like uh, Abilene, ISD, and Wiley, we're, we're standing in line as well, waiting on an order for Chromebooks, which is our uh, device of choice uh, for our community. Uh, several were handed out, uh, nothing near to the comparison of the larger districts. Uh, we had just under 200 handed out last year. Most of those, uh, just a, hand few, a, hand few, a handful of those were not returned. Um, and then, uh, beyond that, uh, we, uh, we do have several families that have access to devices at home. It's a part of our survey uh, that we've sent home uh, uh, through the internet uh, to our families. So we'll round up that information and as school, as school begins on August the 19th for our students, uh, if there are needs for devices, we'll deploy those Chromebooks once again. Uh, including the new ones upon their arrival. I think that's going to be somewhere in the four to six weeks uh, route, uh, path out. Um, and then uh, is, uh, the other access that we have, uh, we've provided a hotspot within our middle school parking lot. It's a pretty substantial parking lot for those that might need. Uh, it's an access point uh, where students and families could, or families could drive up their student and access the internet there. Uh, and and uh, get through some of their their schoolwork remotely, um, and but but other than that, uh, that's that's where we are for now. And hopefully, uh, what we have in place is, is uh, um, enough, and then we'll add if needed. 
All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Teal. Dr. Howard, in uh, Sweetwater, you, you have kind of a combination of city kids and those living in the rural areas. How is that going to work with uh, these devices and the Internet? Yeah, the, the, the pillar of our plan that I did not mention earlier is student supports. So when it comes to connectivity and devices, it all flows into how are we supporting our students uh, when they choose or are forced or required to go in, in online learning. And I think the guys up here on stage have, have handled this question very well because there's really two issues. There's, there's devices and then there's connectivity. So you gotta have the devices, but you also have to have access to the internet. So from the device standpoint, we've been very fortunate to have uh, Chromebooks and iPads. Uh, we've tried to push all of the touch screen devices, the iPads down to our younger students because they don't use the keyboard as much. So they have access on the touch screen. We are moving to be Chromebooks universal across the district, but uh, they're back ordered like everybody <laughs> else is dealing with those. Uh, so, but we do have enough devices to be one to one. So all 2300 ish students of Sweetwater ISD will have access to a device, whether that's an iPad or a Chromebook. Um, in order to, uh, if they transition to online, they'll take that home with them. Or uh, for the most part, if they're face to face for the younger kids, they'll be left at school and be able to have those uh, to access during the school day. But um, when it comes back to, to connectivity and online access, we partnered with AT&T, Suddenlink, to be able to provide some low cost internet options for our families in Sweetwater. We have expanded the reach of our um, uh, online capabilities on our campuses. So expanded the, the scope that that can reach within the community. And then we have partnered with several businesses, Sutherland's and others uh, within the community to offer uh, expanded Wi-Fi access from different businesses as well. But uh, you know, one of, one of the biggest concerns that I have is with all those efforts, we may not be reaching every student to have online connectivity. So in the case that we turn out and we go fully online, we will still have the option for students that do not have connectivity at home to come into our buildings and receive, even if it's more of an online looking instructional um, day, they will have access to internet and be able to come into our buildings. We'll obviously be able, because it's, that's a limited number, social distance and space our students out. So for those that do not have connectivity, in the case where we had to turn and go fully online, we would still bring some students in so that they have that access. Very good, Dr. Howard, thank you. If I've gotten one word here, it's synchronous, asynchronous, and community partners. You all have mentioned that and how important that is to getting the job done for your students. And by the end of the broadcast, we'll be able to spell both of them. <laughs> well, well, I'm still working on, on A. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to take a, a brief break here, gentlemen, and then we'll be back. We do want to mention that we have an interactive map which locates all the school districts in the KTAB viewing area and also outlines the, the plan for their returning to school. And of course, that website is bigcountryhomepage.com. When we come back, more from our superintendents on this unprecedented start to our school year. You're watching Back to School, a community conversation. We'll be right back.